This historic cemetery is just down the road from the haunted Columbia Gorge Community College on East Scenic Drive. This is the final stop on our tour of Haunted the Dalles at this time. Of course, if I hear about another great location, I'll be back. The Pioneer Cemetery is another location that people report similar sightings. Who haunts this cemetery? Let's find out. Welcome to Investigating the Northwest. This channel is dedicated to exploring the mysterious, haunted, beautiful, and historical of the Pacific Northwest. This is the final stop on our tour of Haunted the Dalles, Oregon, a historic town nestled in by the Columbia River. The Dalles Pioneer Cemetery was first used in 1860. The land was donated to the city by Windsor B. Bigelow. The first verified person to be buried there was M.J. Kelly in 1860. And there were only about 198 people buried in this cemetery. There was also a Chinese and Hebrew cemetery located right near Pioneer, but it's said that all those graves were moved when Scenic Drive was built. In 1911, a fire swept through the Dalles and destroyed many of the wooden grave markers. If you watched the video about Clint's bookstore, you'll know that fires plagued the city around the turn of the century, as the original location of Clint's was destroyed in 1891. Townspeople did their best to research and keep a record of the burials in the cemetery. Most notable was George Brown, the fire marshal at the time of the fire, and historian Lulu Crandall in 1929. Per the Pioneer Cemetery Preservation Plan of 2004, quote, Some of the notable people buried in the Pioneer Cemetery include Joseph G. Wilson, a congressman and Oregon Supreme District Court Judge and Circuit Judge, Reverend Ezra Fisher, founder of the Dalles Baptist Church, Caleb Brooks, a prominent orchardist, D.J. Leonard, operator of an early stage station on the John Day River and infamous for being shot by his wife who was later acquitted. Triplets of Robert and Jane Pentland. Pentland started the first waterworks in Dalles City. Michael Dimon, who died a hero in 1891 the Dalles Fire. And W.L. Worthington, principal of the Dalles Public Schools. End quote. Most of the burials occurred before 1900, and the Odd Fellows Cemetery in the Dalles became the primary cemetery for the city and today hosts about 11,000 graves, as compared to the 198 graves in this Pioneer Cemetery. The final person to be buried in the Pioneer Cemetery was Liz Wilson Bueller, who passed in 2015. Her grandfather and other family members were also buried in the Pioneer Cemetery, so she was laid to rest with them. Previously mentioned Joseph Gardner Wilson, her grandfather, was Wasco County's first circuit court judge. He passed in 1872, and the Joseph G. Wilson Elementary School is named after him. Currently, the cemetery is in poor condition. The fences and the entrance gate are new, the initial cemetery marker has been cleaned, and a large memorial has been placed near the entrance. The memorial displays a complete list of the deceased interred at the cemetery. The list covers both the front and the back of the memorial. Some of the deceased were moved to other cemeteries, and of course, wooden gravestone markers were burned down. With that in mind, it's easy to understand why there are so few headstones remaining in the Pioneer Cemetery. As I searched for haunting reports in the Dalles and Facebook groups for the Dalles, this ghostly sighting was reported multiple times. Quote, the cemetery up by the college. I saw a girl in crutches and wounds a while back, like five years ago, end quote. Also a report of friends who had seen something similar, quote, they saw a little girl that looked like she was hurt walking through there. By the way she moved was odd and the feeling wasn't right and they kept calling out to her. They followed her and when they turned, she was gone, end quote. 
So multiple people have reported seeing an injured girl walking through the cemetery. They don't state whether it's at night, during the day, if the little girl was walking through the cemetery or outside of the cemetery, that is still vague. But regardless, that is the legend that's associated with the Pioneer Cemetery. Those who have watched my videos know that I love to dig into these origin stories. So, fact or fiction, was there a young girl with a need for crutches buried in the cemetery? Well, this legend is undetermined. I checked through all the memorials in the cemetery. There were only 198, not a lot to go through. And lots of young girls have been buried there, many without markers. Between smallpox, scarlet fever, diphtheria, and other illnesses, life expectancy was low. There was one report of a young girl who had died of a gunshot, but I couldn't find any more information about that incident. Due to the many illnesses plaguing that time, a young girl may have needed crutches before she passed. However, I could not find a specific one to associate with this particular ghost story. Although I couldn't find a record of the girl who may be haunting the Pioneer Cemetery, I did come up with a really interesting tale associated with this cemetery. And I really love to share stories that are associated with the people in these cemeteries. The one I'm gonna to talk to you about today is D.J. Leonard, which I mentioned very briefly before. And it's not actually the story of D.J. Leonard that I'm going to delve into, but he is the beginning of this story. So as mentioned before, one of the notable graves in Pioneer Cemetery is that of D.J. Leonard. And while he is buried here, the story that is most fascinating is that of his wife, Mary Leonard. Daniel Leonard died on January 16, 1878, of a gunshot wound to the head. After contentious divorce proceedings in the years prior, in 1878, Daniel is found shot, but alive, on January 4th or 5th, 1878. Per findagrave.com, quote, January 4th or 5th, 1878, Daniel Leonard is shot in the head with a little gun. There are no witnesses to the shooting, no indication of a struggle or an attempted burglary, and no one but Mary with a motive to kill him. Mary Leonard, who had been seen in the neighborhood the night of and the day after the killing, is arrested on a charge of assault with intent to kill and locked up in the county jail in the Dalles. Daniel never actually identifies her as his assailant, end quote. Note that the phrasing is a little confusing because it should have referred to at this point as his shooting rather than his killing because he didn't die until 10 days, 10, 11 days later on January 16th, Daniel dies. Mary is then formally charged and tried for his murder. The evidence against her is very circumstantial and the newspapers clearly sided with her. The newspaper articles at the time state, with no sugarcoating whatsoever, that Daniel was, per the new Northwest newspaper, he was, quote, a brutal wretch of whom the world should be only too happy to be rid, end quote. And also, quote, a monster for whom his treatment of women should have been slain by a woman, whether he was or not, end quote. People didn't really like Daniel to begin with, and there were likely many people that wanted to shoot him. <laughs> but Mary spent 11 months in prison in the county jail before she was acquitted of his murder. But Mary was quite busy during that time that she was in the county jail. She studied law during her imprisonment and was admitted to the bar in the Washington Territory in 1884. She applied multiple times to the bar in Oregon State and was finally accepted in 1886, becoming the first female lawyer in the state of Oregon. Mary had a reputation of being an aggressive lawyer and made her mark in Portland, Oregon. 
she was dubbed Judge Leonard for her tenacity in and out of the courtroom and her aggressiveness during her cases. And that doesn't mean she was liked, though. The police tried to charge her with insanity, claiming that she was overly paranoid and kept calling them for non-existent enemies. But she charged back that they were trying to discredit her because she knew too much about their nefarious activities. She died of kidney disease in 1912 after living her life authentically and with no apologies. If you'd like to see the grave of DJ Leonard and the start of this amazing story of the first female lawyer in Oregon, Mary Leonard, then he is laying to rest in the Pioneer Cemetery. Pioneer Cemetery is located on the 400 block East Scenic Drive, The Dalles, Oregon. It is open to the public, it seems, at any time of the day or night. Although it a little dilapidated, it is a quiet and peaceful place to stroll. It's not known if the ghost of the young girl was seen during the day or night, so keep a lookout any time you're there. Thank you so much for joining me today to learn about the Haunted Pioneer Cemetery of the Dalles, Oregon. Don't forget, if you're interested in learning about the mysteries of the Pacific Northwest, of exploring fascinating locations and discovering local legends, please do subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to receive an email when a new video is released. Thank you.